What is going on, y'all? Five Sports Talk back at it with another video. You know the drill. We're talking week 15 here, here to give you guys my picks and predictions for all games in week 15, folks. So I've got all the games listed here with their respective spreads. I'm going to go through every single game, give you guys an overall pick straight up for that game and also a pick against the spread. So with that being said, if you're new to the channel, make sure to go ahead and subscribe if you have not done so already, guys. Make sure you are following me on all my social media platforms. The links are always down below and on the screen. Best place to reach out to me, ask questions, do what it is you got to do. With that being said, let's get into it. All right. As always, we start with transparency here. How did I do last week and what is my record overall and against the spread. So last week I went overall 11 and 5 and against the spread I went 8 and 7. So pretty decent week and I will take it. I had a very bold call last week if you guys do remember I did predict that the Philadelphia Eagles would upset the New Orleans Saints. That was my uh, big upset of the week and obviously it ended up happening. So don't want to pat myself too much on the back here but uh, there you have it folks. So that brings my overall record, so I'm going to give you guys what my overall record on the season is, as well as versus the spread. Okay, so overall and versus the spread. Overall, my record on the season is 141, 65, and 1. And then against the spread, I am 110, 91, and 1. All right, so there you have it, 145, 65, and 1. And one ten ninety one and one, so still decent. I want to keep improving, but there you have it. All right. So with that being said, let's get into today's picks. All right. So here we go. We got a lot of games this week, folks. So I'm going to try to go through each and every game a little quicker. So we start with the Thursday game. As you can see, I put in a couple of lines here to separate it out. We got the Thursday game, and then this week we have two Saturday games. We've got the whole Sunday slate, and then we've got the Monday night game. All right, so just want to point that out. So again, starting with the Thursday night game, we've got the Chargers at the Raiders. This is a minus three point spread in favor of the Raiders. And I got to tell you folks, it's a division matchup. And uh, right off the bat, I'm starting with an underdog here. I like the Chargers in this game uh, straight up to win. Um, and here's the reason why. Yes, the Raiders are at home. And the Raiders have been the better team, I believe, the entire season. But... The Raiders are going to be missing a lot of their defensive players in this matchup, and they're already not a good defense. Josh Jacobs is not 100%. Uh, then you've got Henry Ruggs out on the COVID list. So this team is banged up. So to me, this is all about health, the Raiders team not being at 100%. And then we take a look at the Chargers team. They have really gotten healthy. They've got their horses back in Austin Eckler, who should tear apart this porous Raiders run defense. And then uh, Keenan Allen should be able to play, Mike Williams, Hunter Henry. And we know Justin Herbert has been uh, the most impressive rookie quarterback the entire season. So I like the Raiders here in an upset, folks. Uh, I know they have, excuse me, I like the Chargers here. I misspoke. I know the Chargers have been the Chargers all season long, but I do think they figure out a way to make it happen here. And again, it's a three-point spread, so it's not a, like a big underdog. So I'm going to go with the Chargers here to upset the Raiders uh, on the road. All right, moving on to the Saturday games. We've got the Buffalo Bills at the Denver Broncos and the Carolina Panthers at the Green Bay Packers. Look, overall, I'm not taking any chances here. These are pretty easy picks straight up. I'm going to take the Bills here, and I'm going to take the Packers. But if we're talking against the spread, let's talk about the Bills and the Broncos. Here's the thing. It's a six and a half point spread, which I do like, but here's my thing with the Bills. I am trying my absolute best. Maybe, you know, I'm being called a hater, but I just cannot fully buy into this Buffalo Bills team. And as far as, you know, the Bills being an, a Super Bowl contender, I don't think I would put them in that caliber yet. But certainly when it comes to just this matchup itself, right? Against the Denver Broncos, you would think, oh, they should be able to easily beat them. I don't think it's going to be that easy. I still have them winning. I just don't think it'll be that easy. This Broncos team is weird, folks. You know, they play up to competition sometimes. They're just a gritty team. Vic Fangio, you know, he's a good defensive coach. So I think this is going to be an ugly game. I'd probably take the under in this one, by the way. So to me, 
again, I wish the spread was like seven and a half because I would take the Broncos in a second here to cover that. But I'm going to go still with the Broncos to cover that six and a half point spread, folks. Like I said, I think... Uh, I think the Bills here coming off a big win against the Steelers, this could be a letdown spot, okay? This doesn't mean that the Broncos are a better team. This is just all about, you know, where we are in the season. And the Broncos are getting healthier, uh, so they should have majority of their weapons back. So I could see them covering in this game. All right, moving on to the Panthers at the Packers. It's a big spread here, eight and a half points. No CMC again this week, I believe. Man, I feel sorry for uh, all the owners that drafted CMC. It's been an awful season for him in terms of injuries. Uh, but in terms of this game, like I said, I have the Packers winning it. But uh, do the Panthers have a chance to cover the 8.5 point spread? I believe they do. I think there's a big number here. If it was, was 7, I'd probably take the Packers. But 8.5 is a lot here. You've got a, a Green Bay team that's still very bad against the run. So Mike Davis, who's been fairly impressive this season, should be able to do work against this Packers run defense. Uh, Teddy Bridgewater hasn't been great, but he hasn't been terrible. Uh, so, you know, maybe he's able to exploit that. I think they put up points here. Look, this is a Panthers team that, like, lost to the Chiefs by two. So they can hang in here, and I think this is a big spread. So give me the Panthers here to cover that. All right, moving on to the Sunday slate. Let's run through these uh, quicker. We've got the Houston Texans at the Indianapolis Colts. And, folks, here's the thing with the Texans. I feel sorry for Deshaun Watson at this point. Like, the Texans are just completely completely obliterated with injuries hopefully they should get Brandon Cooks back this week but man when Deshaun Watson is throwing to guys like Chad Hansen and Kiki QT you know it's not good all right so uh in terms of this game I got India at home Jonathan Taylor should be able to run all over um this Houston defense that cannot stop the run at all the only discussion here is that seven and a half point spread and you know what folks I'm sorry I just can't see the Houston Texans making this much of a game here just because of the lack of weapons. That's it, really, okay? And their poorest defense, of course. So if Philip Rivers doesn't even need to do a lot, just hand the ball off to Jonathan Taylor to let him do it. Detroit Lions at the Tennessee Titans. You see here there's no spread. That's for a reason. We don't know if Matt Stafford's going to play this week or not. I think he's trending in the wrong direction, so we probably get Chase Daniel here under center. Either way, does not change my pick. I was going to take the Tennessee Titans here, and I would probably take them if this ended up being a seven-point spread, eight-point spread. I love the Titans here. Folks, I think Derrick Henry should be talked about in the MVP conversation. This is a man who is on pace if he averages, you know, like 150 yards a game, which is very possible because he's got cake matchups in terms of run defense in the last three games of the season to get to 2,000 yards. And we're talking about a Detroit team that can't stop the run. Derrick Henry is going to just maul them, run all over this Lions team. I got the Titans here. Easy. All right, moving on. Tampa Bay Buccaneers at the Atlanta Falcons. I'm going to go with the Bucs here. It's a minus five and a half point spread. Falcons are cooked, folks. Matt Ryan does not look like the same quarterback without Julio Jones. I'm taking the Falcons here to lose in Tampa Bay to win and cover the minus five and a half points. Moving on to the Jacksonville Jaguars at the Baltimore Ravens. Come on now. I'm going to take the Baltimore Ravens to win this matchup. Lamar Jackson started to look like 2019 Lamar Jackson. So that's obviously a good sign. And they should be able to just run all over this team. I mean, Lamar Jackson might not have to throw against the Jaguars. Minus 13, I'll take it. It's still not big enough for me. All right, moving on to New England Patriots at the Miami Dolphins. Now it started, starts to get a little interesting here, all right? Before this week, I probably was leaning towards the Dolphins, and they are a two-point favorite in this matchup. But after this week, or I should say during this, this week, thinking about this matchup, a couple of things here. Bill Belichick against rookie quarterbacks. We saw what happened with Justin Herbert when he went up against his Patriots defense. 45-0. Yeah, he got blanked. And then the next thing, injuries. Miami Dolphins. Might not have Devontae Parker, their number one receiver. Might not have Jakeem Grant, their number two receiver. Might not have Mike Gusecki. Actually, I think he's definitely going to be out. Their number one tight end. So, who's Tua going to throw to? Guys like Lynn Bowden? So, no weapons. Going up against Bill Belichick. I'm sorry. All the value here is on the Patriots. Take them to win this game. All right. Moving on to the Chicago Bears at the Minnesota Vikings here. I've got another upset for you guys, folks. This Bears team, 
I'm telling you, they're a different team ever since Mitchell Trubisky came back under center. And this offense just looks way better to me. All right. So Minnesota and Chicago is going to be a very close game. It's a three-point spread in favor of the home team, the Minnesota Vikings. But I believe the Bears defense is better than the Vikings defense, which is it, it shouldn't be much of a conversation. And the offense is finally starting to play better now. Combine all of those things. David Montgomery's running really well. Allen Robinson's been on a tear. Mitchell Trubisky is playing some of the best football of his career. Give me the Chicago Bears here to uh, upset the Minnesota Vikings and win this game. All right, moving on to the Seattle Seahawks and the Washington football team. It's a five-point spread in favor of the Seahawks. This game scares me, if I could speak properly. This game scares me. I would stay away from this game. If I'm betting on it, I, I just, I would stay away from this game, folks. Washington's got a very good defense. We saw we can't rely on Seattle when they blew that game against the Giants. So this could be a very, very uh, interesting game. I'm still going to pick the Seahawks to win, but I'll take the Washington football team to cover, folks. That defense, and if they have Alex Smith back, oh, that is going to be tough for the Seahawks. So Seahawks win and Washington football team covers. And let me actually put the uh, cover arrows here because I have New England covering and Chicago covering. Well, not covering. They're winning. The, I have them uh, winning the matchup, but you get my point. Moving on to San Francisco 49ers at the Dallas Cowboys. Minus two and a half points spread for the 49ers. Give me the home team. The Dallas Cowboys. Yes, that's right. The Dallas Cowboys. Folks, look, this is just all about attrition here. Again, we're dealing with a team that has all the injuries in the world. The 49ers are literally down to like Brandon Ayuk and nothing, right? Kendrick Bourne, Richie James. So it's just a matter of you don't have your healthy pieces. And the 49ers defense, which I thought was getting better, I mean, they got tore apart by the Buffalo Bills. Um, they didn't look good against the Washington football team. So I can't trust the offense, and I can't trust the defense. And speaking of the offense, Nick Mullins could get benched. So you're talking about a quarterback change to maybe C.J. Beathard, right? So... I'm, I'm not trusting this 49ers team. At least Dallas, even though their defense is awful, at least they have a competent, decent quarterback in Andy Dalton and some weapons around him. So give me the Cowboys here to upset the 49ers and the Cowboys are at home. Yeah, I'll take them. All right, moving on to the Jets at the Rams here. Huge monster spread, minus 17 and a half. You know I'm taking the Rams here. Come on, I haven't bet against the Jets all year, and I'm perfect, and I'm going to keep doing it. 17 and a half point spread. I thought the Jets would cover last week, and they didn't. They got, sh uh, not shut out, they put up three points, but they got annihilated, 40 to three. I'm not picking the Jets to cover anything. I'm sorry. Give me the Rams to cover 17 and a half. Philadelphia Eagles at the Arizona Cardinals. My Cinderella from last week, the Eagles. Uh, are going up against the Arizona Cardinals. It's a six and six point spread in favor of the Cardinals, folks. Eagles fans, you guys might love me. I'm picking your team again. I'm doing it again. This team has unlocked its potential with Jalen Hurts. You know, Carson Wentz, for whatever reason, maybe, uh, you know, this offense was just not meant for him anymore. But Jalen Hurts, I think this is, you know, the perfect offense for him how Doug Peterson is running it. Miles Sanders, I believe, is going to run all over this Cardinals run defense. And I like what Philly's doing. Arizona, with regards to Kyler Murray, he has not been the same quarterback. He's dealing with an injury. And then DeAndre Hopkins has been very up and down here. So I like Philly to continue their momentum. Uh, even if they're on the road here, this is a dome game, so weather shouldn't be a factor here. I like Philly, folks. And I think that's a big number. Six, six points is a lot. All right, if this was like two, maybe one, I'd consider Arizona, but six, yeah, I'll take Philly to cover. And I have them straight up winning this game, by the way. I think I just think with Jalen Hurts, they're just a better team right now. All right, moving on to the Kansas City Chiefs at the New Orleans Saints and Folks. I would be much more excited for this matchup if I knew that Drew Brees was going to play, but I don't believe Drew Brees is going to play this week. I think it's another week of Taysom Hill. And believe you me, Drew Brees is playing. I would have picked the Saints. You heard it here first. All right, but I'm going to go with the Kansas City Chiefs here um, to win this game. If it's Taysom Hill under center, it's, it's, I'm sorry. Like, he's not going to be able to keep up with Patrick Mahomes and company. Three and a half point spread. Mm, 
I wish it was three. I'd definitely take the Chiefs here, but I'll still take them here to cover that. The Saints, I mean, they're one of the best teams in the NFC. It's just that, you know, they, Taysom Hill has played against, you know, Falcons twice, the Broncos who didn't have a quarterback, you know, and, and you know, teams like that. So I can't really say I've seen him go up against good defenses or teams that have forced him to throw the football. So that's why I, I've, I've got to go with the Chiefs here. Cleveland Browns at the New York Giants. It's an easy one for me. I got the Browns here. The Giants uh, might not have Daniel Jones this week. I'm sorry. I know Colt McCoy pulled off the, the miracle against the Seattle Seahawks. I just don't think it happens. Again, the Browns are hot. They're rolling. Offense is clicking. Baker's playing well, giving the four and a half points spread to cover here. And finally, Pittsburgh Steelers at the Cincinnati Bengals. Give me the Steelers to win and cover a monstrous 12 and a half point spread. I think the Steelers destroy the Bengals, who've got Brandon Allen under center, who is just awful. And the Steelers are going to be angry and going to want to take out that anger on the Cincinnati Bengals after coming off of two straight losses. So there you have it, folks. My picks and predictions for Week 15. If I were to tell you a money line parlay to play, I would probably say do the following. I would take the Jaguars. I would take the Titans. I would take... The Steelers, I would take the Rams, and I think I would take, yeah, I'm I'm very confident in these four, you know, on the border, maybe Green Bay here, um, that you could put, oh, and I'm also very confident in Tampa Bay, uh, that you could go ahead and put them there, and I'm fairly confident, now let's not get cute here, okay, there you go, so the all the ones that I've circled, I think you can money line parlay those teams. So there you have it, folks. Hope you enjoyed.